we now invite you to listen to the rebroadcast of the live conference entitled World Vegan World Peace, A Conscious Choice at the University of Chicago, Illinois, USA on Thursday, August 11, 2011 with Supreme Master Ching Hai. Now, my next question. <laughs> the United States is facing a huge budget deficit, and the government is considering cutting Medicare costs as a part of the solution to reduce the budget deficit. No, no. Some people oppose the reduction of the Medicare program. Earlier, there had been a heated debate on the health care reform as well in the United States. It seems most of the people have already focused their attention on medical treatment. How can we change people's thinking to live in a way to prevent us from getting sick rather than treat our health after we get sick? That's it. That's it, Madam Commissioner. You're right. Prevention. That is very crucial for people to know. Prevention is better than cure, and it saves a lot of money Then the government don't even need to cut because we will not spend so much on health care anymore if, you know, if people gone vegan. And if you turn vegan, you live healthy immediately. It has been proven through clinical research and medical proof exams. We should have the governments and responsible authorities refer people to the right information and to propagate healthier lifestyle for the uh, benefit of humans as well as the planet. The government can do a whole lot by giving people references through newspapers, broadcasting, television, radio and use the network such as the media or internet to share valuable information about the preventive way to live in a long and healthy life. And in making use of this power of the media, I again congratulate the Commissioner and Mrs. Sherry Avila for their television shows that help people to become more aware of the environment and their health so that they can directly improve their own circumstances. Similarly, our government leader can also share the medical research that clearly highlight the benefits of a healthy vegan diet. We know now through science that the vegan diet can reverse and eliminate all types of disease, even cancers, diabetes, and heart diseases, etc. I mean, reverse immediately in many cases. People just stop having heart attack or heart problem. As soon as they turn vegan, the heart problem stops. This is like a miracle. It's no miracle. Yes? Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol levels, reduces type 2 diabetes, prevents stroke conditions, reverses atherosclerosis, reduces heart disease risk 50%, reduces heart surgery risk 80%, prevents many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increases life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, saves 70% of a total cost of 40 trillion US dollars for reducing global warming, uses 4.5 times less land to grow food, conserves up to 70% clean water, saves 80% of the cleared Amazonian rainforest from animal grazing. A solution for world hunger. Free up 3.4 billion hectares of land. Free up 760 million tons of grain every year, or half the world's grain supply. Consumes one-third fossil fuels of those used for meat production. Reduces pollution from untreated animal waste. Maintains cleaner air saves 4.5 tons of emissions per U.S. household per year, stop 80% of global warming, plus more. Save your life. Be veg. Go green. 
We just have to eat scientifically. We don't put poison into our body and expect it to run well. Just like we don't put water in the car and to replace petrol or mix it with petrol, then of course our car will have problem. Yes, this is all like engine car. We have to treat it nicely, wisely, scientifically. <laughs> the government can also collaborate with forward-thinking professional organizations such as the Physicians' Committee for Responsible Medicine based in Washington, D.C., the capital. They live next door. The government should discuss with them. <laughs> Whose members promote the vegan diet as effective, proven, preventive medicine? You can ask them for all the proof you need. Staying healthy is everyone's dream, but we have to do it. Don't just dream about it, not just talk about it. Make it happen. Yes, make it happen. Go about to put back health into our body. So you are absolutely right, Commissioner Horton. People have to know that. Not only our health, but our planet's future depends on it. The government is in the right position, have the right power to start connecting people to these resources. Thank you, madam. <laughs> I get all excited when it comes to people's health and happiness because it's right there in front of our eyes. Everyone can be healthy and happy. Why don't we just do it, you know? I'm just so excited because it's so easy why people have to suffer. Lack of information, wrong lobby, wrong uh, advocate. Please turn around. Help people to stay healthy and happy. Then the country will grow also strong. The country will grow strong if you have strong people, healthy people. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Star from Chicago. <laughs> and I will continue to take this message forward. And thank you, and everyone here who has been a great example. Thank you, Supreme Master Ching Hai, for sharing your thoughts. God bless you. And they will forever be in my heart, and I love you. Thank you. God loves you. <laughs> it's easy to love you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now, uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai, my lovely wife has a question to ask also. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Good evening. The, the better half. <laughs> Good evening, <laughs> Madam Sherry. <laughs> I uh, just wanted to start off with saying that uh, I probably started being a vegan when I was about 10 years old, and the teacher said, make sure there's a green and yellow vegetable on the plate. Wow. And I went home and told my mother that, and my mother was very like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but since then, now my vegetables are green, yellow, red, and all the colors of the rainbow, probably. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that I feel better when I eat a lot of vegetables yes. and I follow the diet. And I know that I sing better for anybody out there who's a singer, wow. keep that in mind. Wow. And I know that uh, my uh, overall well-being psychologically is better. Yes. Uh, there are just so many wonderful, honestly, benefits from uh, eating vegan that oh. it's just endless almost. So I just wanted to share that. You are a good I example. My question. Your skin look good, your eyes sparkling, <laughs> your hair is full. <laughs> good example, madam. <laughs> Thank you. Thank You've you. been vegan all this time. Can we hear you singing later on? <laughs> <laughs> a short, maybe? <laughs> Oh, maybe now even. <laughs> she is a good singer. She loves the Irish songs, and I love the Irish songs also. Yes. Well, we're going to have some wonderful singers here that it'll be fun to hear. So. Oh, <laughs> no, but it's different. You and him sing one short song. It's, it's just a minute. <laughs> Get on with the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ma'am. 
so you're too I, modest. Uh, yes. I think the bottom line here is for everybody, we all want to be healthy. That's ah, yes. the bottom line. Sure. And sure. you your words that you shared made a big difference, will make a big difference now even as we speak and as uh, Patricia said, go forward. Yes. I was particularly touched by the poem, Please Don't, from your poetry book, The Love of Centuries. Oh, I have a personal one. connection to that poem because my father served in the Philippines during World War II. Oh. And I uh, got to know a combination of the sufferings that he suffered there and continued to suffer even here oh. when he was back in the United States. I'm so sorry. In your poem, Please Don't, you portray how war is against human nature, which I truly believe. I would like to read a few words from that poem, and so I am going to read those now. Please don't go, leaving an elderly mother and innocent siblings. There is no real hatred among us human beings. Battlefields have but guns, swords, and hostilities, while here a warm house welcomes your company. Please don't go, wreaking suffering on others. There is no real animosity, only thirst for power. Countless corpses lie shriveled to expand an empire, whereas here only love, peace, and safety thrive. Taking lives, we'll have to pay with our own. How can we rejoice in causing demise and separation? Only boundless, lasting compassion shall make us great among all creation. This is very emotional to me. Oh, there are I see. many conflicts in the world right now, as we all know. Yes. And the words of this poem speak very strongly about our current time. How can we make people understand that war is not the solution to conflicts? Can yeah. you explain the best ways for countries to protect their uniqueness, spiritual and moral values, and material possessions? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Avila, for your genuine concern for people in turmoil right now. Thank you. Uh, yes, I also feel a little emotional. The poem was written uh, the way I felt in my heart. Uh, if I could just kneel all day, all night, begging the world to stop the war, and if that would help, I would do it. Because uh, I also, like yourself, I also experienced firsthand the suffering of the people during the war. Yes. I was born in Vietnam, as you know, right? We call ourselves civilized uh, society. We are in 21st century now, and we have developed all kinds of techniques and technological invention, and we call ourselves advanced, developed. And we do kind of uh, look down upon the Stone Age humans, you know, as barbarous, warlike creatures who made all grounds their hunting grounds and would kill each other for women, men, you know, love, rival, food, water, or territories, etc. We should question ourselves, what age are we in now? And why we are acting like in Stone Age in some areas? I am sorry for your personal pain, and may God bless your father and all the victims of war soldiers and civilian alike. The best way for all the countries to preserve themselves is by helping fellow nations to grow and develop, not by war, not by killing or destroying humans, fellow humans, causing so much loss, pain, and suffering on all levels, as you know it. The United States policy has many good points, mind you. 
like respecting and welcoming the talented, the brainy people, the genuine, good humans, the experts, and the spiritual genuines. Also expanding the land state by state with peaceful means. That's why your country expanded now. In the East, the ancient political strategy has always been to control the nearby nation and to befriend the faraway lands. So countries in the East, for example, have always expanded and prospered despite occasional periods of setback. Mind you, I have to tell you, this strategy originated from China since ancient time. They want always like conquer the neighbors and befriend the uh, faraway lands. Actually, the, the policy has some good uh, logical point, not the invasion part, but the part that you have to be strong yourself. Your nation has to be strong because the neighboring countries would not hire your nation if you are powerful and strong, naturally, yes? So for peace's sake, that is to protect our land and people, we should be strong. Maybe we should have muscle, so to say, to ward off invasion. But to engage in war with faraway lands would be costly, too costly, as you know it and difficult due to distance. This the ancient strategies already knew. It's all written in the war and peace strategy of Chinese um, policy. Uh, if you don't believe me, you can read it. <laughs> because Sun Tzu Bing Fa mean the military strategy of Master Sun. It's very famous, okay? If we engage in war with faraway land, even nowadays, we have aeroplane and all that. Distance don't mean much, but still, it's very costly. And the supply is difficult and lacking in military or food or familiar uh, nutrition for the soldiers. Uh, the unfamiliar surroundings, the different languages and backgrounds, the traditions and climates, etc., the soldiers cannot be used to it. Shoulders will be more fatigued because of all that, less confident, more fearful, more vulnerable, and lacking morale, while the so-called enemies are in their own elements, knowing their steps, knowing every corner of their country, and can be more in control of all combat advantages. It would be even better, I would say, the best, of course, if we do not so-called control the neighboring nations by force, but instead offer benevolent assistance in all near and far corners of the world. We should use our power and financial privileges to extend humanitarian rather than military help or even aggression action to those weaker and developing nations, then enemies would fade. You see, Abraham Lincoln, what did he say? I destroy my enemies by make them my friends. Even your past president know these lessons. The enemies then would fade. Peace would be possible and the global economy will stabilize and bloom. And soon, all nations will enjoy the same prosperity and peace, dignity and freedom as family members of the human race. The people in the world will respect and cooperate with each other, all with the powerful nation, not out of fear of strong military force, but out of respect and love for any country, however strong and rich, because from their heart they love and respect this country and the government that offering them help. Meanwhile, these countries cannot develop in their own space and time while preserving their traditions and protecting moral values. 
and the country who helps, you see, also profit because they will not have to spend so much money in war. And we can learn from each other, no matter how developed or underdeveloped country, we always have something to offer. And the helping hands we also receive manifold benefits from economy to peace, from happiness to heaven, blessing. And since charity begins at home, I would like to say that I appreciate your many endeavors in your own community to help it flourish and develop, such as through your church or by introducing people to cultural beauty at one of your local art museums and the Irish American Heritage Center. And before that, as a Girl Scouts leader yourself, with gentle, wholesome vegan teachers as yourself who makes positive impacts, we could have a more peaceful world. We should have more people like you. Thanks again, Mrs. Avila. Thank you. Ma Sherry. <laughs> Thank you, Ma Sherry. <laughs> that is French for my darling. <laughs> Your name is Sherry, similar to Ma Sherry in French. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I just went to a cross-cultural, cross-racial seminar last Saturday, and it was brought up that through love, that would help us to try to understand each other better. But it was a very um, interesting uh, seminar. <laughs> cross-cultural, cross-racial, through the church, through the church. Yeah, I hope uh, there are more activities and more people like you who really get down to work with the people, you know, not just sit and talk. <laughs> well, when I came back home to the church and I said to the congregation that I attended this cross-cultural, cross-racial uh, seminar, I think some of you would like to go to this. Several people came up to me and they said they would like to go to this. See? So I think that when the opportunity is there that there are others out there who are open and willing, ready to learn. So. Right. Uh, and I, uh, I actually have your poetry book with me. Uh, this is The Love of Centuries. Oh. Frank and I really love the book, both the uh, illustrations in it as well as the words in it and the variety of poetry that's in it. And uh, so I have another poem. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> another poem. And so I'm going to read the touching You're really poem. a poem lover, aren't you? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, my daughter was the founder of the poetry club in high school. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. She takes it from whom? <laughs> so this uh, particular touching poem, which is in actually an environmental poem yes. is Please Wake Up. And as I said, it's from The Love of Centuries. Oh world, wake up and behold, rivers and mountains are in tumult, burnt forest, eroded hills, desiccated streams. Whither do the poor souls go in the end of all dreams? Oh heart, relent your sobbing for my soul to rest in long nights. Tears dried up and I'm wordless, weeping in pain for the tormented. Oh, night, please kindle your source of light. Shine the way for those human souls in darkness. Be serene for my soul to still and enter emptiness with the miraculous celestial melody. Oh, day. Stir not sudden unrest, for peace to repose in our very hearts, for humankind struggles to subside, for the true self to gloriously shine. So I was particularly touched by that poem because it is an environmental poem and we have become very actively involved in the environment. And so that inspired my husband and me to continue to help people to renew our planet. And although the world is lively and advanced, many of us did not realize that we were asleep. I think when Frank and I go to some of these conferences and we find out more and more about the toxins and the uh, pesticides and so forth, we realize that we're definitely asleep. How did we come to this slumber? That's the question, I guess. What are some of the ways to awaken people 
Will we ever know our true self in order for it to gloriously shine as your poem states? Thank you, Supreme Master. Thank you, Madam. Um, I have something to tell you, which I did not tell anyone before. When I read that poetry together with the Please Don't, I was very, very in a physical bad shape. I thought that was the last, the last thing I ever tell the world in these poems. It was really all my heart and soul in there. And I was crying when I wrote it, and I was crying when I read it. I thought that was the last time I ever tell the world anything. I thought I'm going to say goodbye to the world. And that was a kind of, kind of a goodbye poem as well. But uh, heaven wants me to continue to stay in this world for a while longer. So that's probably why it touched you so much, because it's even translated. <laughs> it's not as original as in the Vietnamese, which is even more uh, stirring, for me at least, yes. So uh, anyway, I'm glad that it touched you. Maybe it have touched some other people as well, and maybe it will uh, remind them to do something for themselves and for the planet, something more positive, more constructive. I thought that was the last speech I ever made in poem, yes. Uh, but I'm still here, thanks to God and heaven. They told me, no, no, you stay. <laughs> well, Madame, to know the true self, for it to gloriously shine through. There's only two things to do. We are already God-like. We are already the children of God. And the children have similar quality to the parents. We all know that, even physically. Children are from parents. We are the children from God, so we are God. At least we're God's children, God's offspring. So to know our true self, to know the meaning in the kingdom of God is very easy. That's just to go back to our origin, to turn back to where we are. Just like if your children got lost on the street, and if they found their way back home, then they're back home again, because they're already your children. So nothing can change that. No law, no disaster, nothing can change the fact that your daughter is Miss Avila. Your daughter, you see? Yes. So if everyone told us, or the master of all told us that we are the children of God, then we are the children of God. Why should Jesus lie to us about our origin? Why should Buddha tell us the untruth about our greatness? So we have to believe it. We are the children of God now. So to go back to be the children of God again is so easy. Loving viewers, thank you for watching today's episode of Words of Wisdom. Join us again tomorrow for part five of World Vegan, World Peace, A Conscious Choice. If the world were to go 100% vegetarian by now, the good effect of it will be seen within more or less 60 days, eight short weeks. And what kind of earth would we live in? We'd be Eden again. Things will be more lush for abundance People will feel happier, even without reason. They will not know why they feel happy. And food will be enough everywhere. River will run plentiful again. Disaster will cease. Heaven will smile on humans. And good wishes will be fulfilled. That is a kind of Eden. <laughs>